Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today we are going to be extracting acetylsalicylic acid from these aspirin tablets. Now, aspirin, the main component of aspirin, is actually acetylsalicylic acid, which is very use useful because we can actually change acetylsalicylic acid to uh, salicylic acid and then to phenol. Phenol has a variety of applications, and so does salicylic acid, and I do plan to be exploring several of these in the future video. And I would really like to make some uh, phenolthalamine, which is a pH indicator, uh, through a slew of processes and steps. Um, and basically, uh, the main source of this phenolthalamine is going to originate from the acetylsalicylic acid from the aspirin tablets. So you really do need to start with aspirin. So I went to the drugstore and picked up two th uh, boxes. Um, this was just from Thirsty Foods uh, in the pharmacy. Um, and each uh, box contains 100 tablets. And this is the extra strength, which is the cheapest. And it has 500 milligrams of acetylsalicylic acid per tablet, which is about half a gram. So um, from all this, we should uh, be able to get 50 grams of acetylsalicylic acid from each. So about 100 grams um, is our maximum yield. And we'll, of course, we'll probably not get that, but we should be close. Now, um, I went through the solubility of acetylsalicylic acid with a couple of different solvents, and I think I'm going to actually try to use methanol, because uh, it's what I could get for the cheapest. So, um, I recently went over to Home Depot, and I was almost out of methanol, so I simply bought another 4 liters of it, and um, this was about $10. It's extremely cheap and a very useful solvent. So definitely go to Home Depot or Canadian Tire somewhere and buy a bunch of um, methanol. It's sold as methyl hydrate or possibly uh, methyl alcohol. Um, uh, it go, go, goes by a couple different names. Um, anyhow, so we're going to be using about probably 700 or 800 milliliters of this to make sure that all the acetylsalicylic acid is dissolved and then we'll uh, get it out. So let's start by taking apart uh, both of these aspirin tablets. Now, it's a good idea to make sure that they are white and not pink or red or something because that dye can be difficult to get rid of and the white, of course, doesn't have dye, so it'll be much easier to get a pure product. So we will first start by uh, crushing these up in a coffee grinder, strictly dedicated to science, although you could also use a mortar and pestle or a hammer or something. Um, but you really should crush them up because if not, it's going to be really difficult to actually dissolve all of the acetylsalicylic acid. So crush them up and I'll meet you back. So before I crush them up, I just wanted to point out that these actually do have a bit of pink dye on them because there's a little logo printed on them. This shouldn't affect it too much, but of course you're going to have some pink dye, which may be difficult to get rid of, but thankfully not the whole pills covered in this. Uh, so I'll grind it all up and I'll meet you back. Okay, so now we can transfer this to a beaker or something. However, I don't have a beaker large enough. Um, to hold on the methanol and acetylsalicylic acid um, because we're going to be using about 800 milliliters of methanol and the largest beaker I have is a 500 milliliter beaker I really should get a larger one a liter beaker would be nice to have but instead we'll just be using this nice canning jar here which will work just as well um, so we'll simply open this up and pour in all of our acetylsalicylic acid and try to knock off as much that was stuck on the sides as possible because of course we want to get the best yield possible so uh, I'll try to knock some off the sides and scrape it off and we'll transfer everything into there. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and measure out about 800, I'll use 800 milliliters of this uh, methanol here, which is of course sold as methyl hydrate. Um, so we'll measure out 800 milliliters of that, put it in here, and mix everything together and meet you back. Okay, so it's all been added and of course it doesn't have to be exactly 800 milliliters, just somewhere around there. And this is about 800 milliliters. Now, you don't want to let this sit out too long because it will, of course, evaporate because methanol is very low vapor pr pressure. Um, so, we will simply stir this around, and if you can see, it has taken on a slight pink color, most likely due to that small amount of dye. However, this isn't going to affect our final yield a huge amount, um, and it shouldn't affect the coloration of our product too much. Now, you want to vigorously stir this for uh, probably 5-10 minutes to make sure as much as the acetosalicylic acid dissolves as possible. And if doing it in a canning jar, similar to what I did, you could of course also just put a canning jar lid on, put a canning jar ring on, so it's nice and sealed, and shake it around, being making sure that you open it and let uh, the gas escape as the methanol vaporizes, so you don't cause an explosion. Um, but that might also be a more viable way of mixing this. But um, yeah, basically we'll just make sure that everything's mixed together super, super well, and at that point we can um, simply filter this, because upon filtering it, we will have removed all of the impurities. So um, I'll finish doing this and meet you back. Okay, so you can see our solution is slightly pink, but um, everything seems to be dissolved, and we filtered off all the rest, and I just threw it out, because it's useless to us. 
Um, and you could wash it a bit with a bit of extra methanol, but I didn't bother because it wouldn't be a huge amount more that we'd be getting. Now, I've done this in the past, and I only got about 6 grams of acetosalicylic acid, um, when I should have got about 22, and um, this is because what I did was rather stupid. See, acetosalicylic acid decomposes at about 180 degrees Celsius. So, if we boil off our solution, and um, stuff starts crystallizing out and gets too hot, we're going to ruin our product, which we really, really, really don't want to do. So, I guess you could sit this in a warm place and let it dry for, you know, two weeks or whatever until all the methanol boils or uh, evaporates away, but that also takes way too long. Now, thankfully, methanol has a very low vapor pressure, um, so I'm really hoping that by sticking it in, um, this is the largest uh, Erlenmeyer flask that I have, but um, I just have a small piddle bottle with a hose attached onto it um, that fits snugly in there. But by uh, taking our solution and putting it in there, and then lowering the pressure with a aspirator vacuum pump, which uh, runs on water, um, basically you put high pressure water in, and it sucks air along with it and creates a rather strong vacuum, which hopefully will work for this application. And basically what it's going to do is hopefully our methanol, because the vapor pressure will be much lower, will boil at a much lower temperature. And um, if it doesn't boil right away, then we might do a bit of gentle heating, but we really won't need to heat it very much and all our methanol will be boiling away. So by doing this, we'll be able to boil away all our methanol, leaving our acetosalicylic acid unscathed. So, what we can do is just transfer a bit to here, set up the aspirator vacuum pump outside, which I'll show you in a moment, and um, then we'll turn on the vacuum. Don't use a normal vacuum pump because you'll ruin your vacuum pump unless you have a cold trap or something. Uh, to get rid of all this methanol, because the methanol will ruin your vacuum pump, which we don't want. So, uh, by the way, an aspirator pump can be uh, bought on eBay for about $10, or pretty cheap. Um, anyhow, so I'll go set this up outside and show you what we do next. So I've actually simply brought it outside and started heating it up on this uh, hot plate. Um, and as you can see, I just have it in some water, so hopefully it doesn't get above 100 degrees Celsius, until, of course, all the water's gone. Um, so we've just been slowly evaporating off that methanol so that hopefully we don't decompose any of our acetosalicylic acid. But um, while the other method does work of using a vacuum and pulling it off, it's actually just way too slow and uh, it's probably more energy intensive than this considering we're using a lot of water. So I find this method superior. So we'll just let all this evaporate off until it's uh, uh, either all boiled off or to, when it's a very saturated solution, it may also be possible to simply cool it down really cold and recrystallize out the acetosalicylic acid, as the solubility does rapidly decrease as the temperature decreases. Um, so, in, if that's uh, what we do, we may actually be able to uh, get rid of all the pink color. However, we don't really, it doesn't really matter if there is pink color, and it would decrease our yield doing a recrystallization, so I might just um, actually let this boil to complete dryness. Uh, well, but we'll see. Um, actually, I might not let it boil to complete dryness because we might accidentally decompose some of our acetosalicylic acid. I think I'll do a recrystallization, then let the rest of the solution evaporate off. I think that's what I'll do. So I'll meet you back as soon as uh, most of this is boiled away. And um, I've already boiled off quite a bit of it, as you can clearly see. Okay, so actually by using the water bath method, I was actually able to boil down to complete dryness, uh, or almost complete dryness, um, because it's not going above 100 degrees Celsius till all the water's gone. So we're not going to melt or decompose any of our acetosalicylic acid. So this is actually quite dry now. Um, it's almost methanol free. And uh, all that we have to do now is actually get rid of the rest of the methanol. Um, and this can be simply done by putting it in the oven at about 100 degrees Celsius. And because we can control the temperature of the oven, we can make sure we don't decompose any. So we're going to go ahead, take this, um, now that's almost completely dry, transfer it to the oven, turn the oven to onto about 100 degrees Celsius, and heat it up to the point of where... It um, has fully released all of the methanol, so it's nice and dry, so we can actually crumble it up and weigh it to get our final result. So um, that's what I'll quickly do, and then I'll meet you back as soon as this nice is nice and dried. Okay, so after being thoroughly dried in the oven below its boiling and melting points, it was um, transferred to these two jars here, and it's in a nice, fine, powdery state. So I weighed out, uh, there's exactly 65 grams of acetosalicylic acid there, and exactly 20 grams over here. So together we got about 85 grams of acetosalicylic acid. We should have got about 100 grams of it from the, all those aspirin tablets. So this is actually not too good of a percent yield because we weren't doing any chemical process at all. And um, that means that most of, 
our um, well result of where or most of our loss was actually when we dissolved the acetylsalicylic acid from the tablets. So that means that we didn't either a we didn't use enough methanol or we didn't let them sit long enough in the methanol to fully uh, remove all the acetylsalicylic acid from everything else. Anyhow, 85 grams of acetylsalicylic acid is enough for me to live with because we'll be able to do lots of different reactions with this. Now, of course, the only purpose I'm going to be using acetylsalicylic acid for is actually to make salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is actually what I really need to make a bunch of other chemicals. So, all of this will be converted to salicylic acid in a future video by a reaction known as uh, acid hydrolysis. Um, I think that's what I'm going to end up carrying out. And I'll go into more on that uh, in the future video. And yes, yeah, so it's basically how to extract acetylsalicylic acid from acid tablets. And despite these only having a small amount of pink, you can still see the evident slight pink color um, from the dye uh, that was used on those the little label on the pills. And yeah, so yeah, one, as I said, that's basically how to get a CSL silic acid from these aspirin tablets. And um, it wasn't too expensive, only $16 for uh, all of that, which is going to go for a variety of uses. So, hope you guys enjoyed. See you later. Bye.